Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Why You Should Set Up a Holding Company in Singapore, organized by Jurstax in collaboration with ABC Banking and Maybank. Before we start with our webinar today, please allow me to give you a brief introduction. So myself, I'm Vanessa Kong, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. With us today, we have Raymond Chan, business partner at Juristax and vice president of Pilota Asia. We also have with us here today, Gregory Karasen from ABC Banking and Dalip Chong from Maybank. So the title of this webinar is why you should set up a holding company in Singapore. The first part introduction to Singapore will be delivered by Raymond Chan, who will be elaborating on the framework, the legal framework of Singapore, the features and benefits of a Singapore holding company. How does it work and how do we set up a holding company in Singapore? The second part of the webinar uh, will be on bank account opening, who will be Dalip Chong talking about it. He will be elaborating on the bank account opening locally, the procedures and minimum deposits and clientele. The third and the final part, international banking solutions will be delivered by Gregory Carrison, who will talk on the banking trends in the past few years in Hong Kong and Singapore, the advantages of international banking partners for international clients, requirements, services and trading facilities. Uh, please let me give you a brief introduction of Juristax. Juristax founded more than 10 years ago. It is a corporate service provider headquartered in Mauritius, providing a range of structuring, company secretarial, corporate trustee, accounting and fund administration and management services. Juristax is a group that provides a consolidated approach to fund family office and corporate services. Juristax has its jurisdictional presence in Seychelles, Rwanda, Dubai, SA and Singapore. For today's webinar, Juristax will be represented by Raymond Chan, business partner at Juristax and vice president of Pilota Asia. Raymond has a strong background in corporates, company secretarial and banking for more than 10 years. Raymond has gained extensive commercial experience in international trade and corporate structuring from leading banks such as Standard Chartered Banks and Citibank. Over the years, Raymond has developed a strong client network and assisted thousands of clients from, from Asia, Southeast Asia, Europe and America to relocate their businesses to Singapore. Moving on, to, moving on to our second speaker, who is Dalip Chong, representing Maybank. Maybank Singapore Limited operates its community financial services businesses, in, which includes their retail small medium enterprise portfolio. Maybank Singapore offers innovative one-stop SME banking solutions, as well as SME business loans designed to help small and medium-sized businesses grow. So today, Maybank will be represented by Dalip Chong. Dalip is a seasoned banking executive with over eight years of versatile experience in retail and SME banking across banks well-versed in customer care and successful in accomplishing revenue goals by applying technical expertise and in-depth product knowledge to identify customer needs and concerns, recommend solutions and establish a trusted relationship. Coming up, coming up to our third speaker who represents ABC Banking. ABC Banking having its headquarters in, in uh, it having its headquarters and banking operations strategically located in Mauritius, ABC Banking Corporation stands as a well-established international bank, highly respected for its excellent reputation, integrity, and for its pro products and services. As part of its international development strategy, ABC Banking Corporation opened a representative office in Hong Kong in 2017 and in Dubai last year. It is the first Mauritian bank to set up footprint in Hong Kong and 
China, creating an ideal platform for unlocking capital in China and Asia for investment in Africa. Gregory is the current chief representative for the Hong Kong rep, for the Hong Kong uh, rep office at, of ABC Banking Corporation. He was appointed group communications manager for ABC Group. He has been hol holding positions in banking and e-commerce in Asia for the past six years and managed several projects in marketing and e-commerce. He joined the ABC Group again in 2019 and has been managing the operations and activities of ABC Banking's representative office in Hong Kong. So the webinar is being recorded and will be available on Facebook and LinkedIn. Please feel free to ask your questions in the chat box below. We will be happy to answer to some of your questions or to all your questions if we have enough time. For all those present here with us today, welcome again to this webinar, why you should set, set up a holding company in Singapore. Without further ado, please let, let us invite our first speaker, Raymond Chan. Raymond, welcome. Thanks very much, Vanessa. And uh, thank you everyone for making time today to uh, listen to us share about Singapore and its general uh, banking background. And uh, so, Good morning to everyone in Europe and joining from Mauritius and also to, to guys joining from uh, Asia as well. Yeah. So um, my name is Raymond, as uh, introduced by Vanessa. Um, we are, I'm, I'm the uh, head of business development uh, with Juristex and one of the key trading partners that uh, Juristex deal with. Yeah. So uh, over the last couple of years, we do facilitate Juristex and their clients here to set up their base in the Asia Pacific, yeah, predominantly in Singapore. And uh, today we're going to share with you more about uh, reasons why we see uh, different business owners from all over the world choose Singapore and uh, in, in particular uh, how Juristex can help. Yeah, in, in deep, yeah. So over the next slide please. Yeah. So um, I think uh, for business owners uh, far and also uh, close by, yeah, the name of Singapore as a city-state have, have been uh, well known across the world. Um, for those of you who, who might have traveled here for holidays or for business, or for those of you who, have, who haven't been here, there are many reasons uh, probably you have heard about Singapore. Okay, You guys probably hear that Singapore is one of the founding members of ASEAN. Um, you have heard that Singapore is a financial hub. You have heard that um, Singapore is a very busy cargo port, very good shopping rating, and people speak many different languages. Yeah. Um, so among all these could be very good factors of a very vibrant ecosystem. Yeah. But today, we're going to summarize a few key points why people choose to do business in Singapore. And uh, there are actually four key reasons. Yeah. So over the next slide, please, we're going to share more why this owner choose Singapore. Yeah. So first and foremost is actually um, the available of the very, very, very favorable tax regime. And uh, the fact that Singapore also has a lot of very favorable um, tax treaties and conditions signed with many, many countries. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, um, the tax uh, uh, corporate headline tax is very, very um, competitive. Yeah. Right now, it is at 17%. And over the last 20 years, Singapore has actually uh, progressively lowered that corporate tax. Yeah. I think the starting point back in the, in the 1990s was actually at 28%. And today it is 17%. It's now one of the lowest you can see among Asia. And of course, with the city state relatively neutral, yeah, across the world, yeah, it has struck a lot of very favorable DTAs across the world with different countries. Yeah. So as of the time of the year 2022, we have 90 DTAs signed globally. And also on top, we have 20 free trade agreements signed as well. The government is also very encouraged, um, encouraging of um, startup activities. Yeah. So in fact, for new companies being set up for the first three years of assessment, they enjoy different degrees of tax breaks. Yeah. So on this table on the top on the bottom right, you can see actually up to 125,000 of your profits would be tax free. Yeah. So meaning that let's say if we have a lot of uh, small to medium sized business being set up here yeah, and uh, let's say that the turnover is around five to ten million dollars and you're making a profit of maybe close to a million dollars. In fact, your effective tax rate is actually much lower than 10 to 15 percent, yeah, which makes it uh, put it at a very, very competitive rate on a global basis. Yeah. So, so over to the next reason, yeah. 
So uh, as I mentioned uh, in the earlier slide, yeah, Singapore is actually the de facto headquarter in the whole of the Southeast Asian region, in the ASEAN region. So in fact, many investors or actually many project owners, they would select to choose Singapore as a regional hub, yeah, either to set up different holding company structure or they would uh, use it as a financing hub yeah, to get a, a very good rates of, of different banks yeah, to, to leverage on that, to subsequently invest in technology projects or manufacturing projects in Southeast Asia. So on this, I will have a further slide to explain further. Yeah. But Singapore has pretty much been chosen as a de facto financial hub yeah, in, um, in Southeast Asia. Um, the government has always been very supportive of, um, of startup scene as well. Yeah, so the previous slides mentioned um, the Singapore Education Force is uh, it's, uh, it's very, very well renowned. Um, so in, among the local population, uh, about 80% uh, of the people has actually more than an undergraduate higher degree. And uh, everyone is English literate among Singapore. We have a good mix of uh, biotech and technology talents on the ground as well. And uh, you can see this uh, chart, which shows that, um, so Singapore actually has a very, very diverse trading partners background. This, in fact, can actually be a strong advantage, you know, especially right now, we have huge geopolitical risks around the world here. Yeah. So you can see the beauty of having a relatively neutral nation that trades with many different um, trading countries. Yeah. So um, flip to the next slide, as Vanessa would show you, um, that um, Singapore, in fact, has achieved very, very decent and good rankings in a lot of innovation areas, economic areas, or even IP protection around the world. Yeah. So, in fact, these rankings has consistently improved, especially in the last 10 years, and is, is basically been the de facto number one or number two in the world yeah, if you want to balance multiple factors, yeah, such as innovations, talents, and taxes. Yeah. So maybe over to the next one, yeah. So today's topic, yeah, we are talking about um, uh, features of holding company, yeah. So we will move to the next slide, perhaps, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so today's topic, we're talking about uh, features of holding companies and holding companies in particular. So of course, this discussion uh, would, would, would not go without elaborating what exactly is a holding company, right? So in general, for those of you who are new to this uh, topic, yeah, it is actually a separate parent company being particularly created on top of existing companies. Yeah. So these holding companies, actually the main purpose is to hold and, and group assets together to hold the operating entity. What they hold can be existing active businesses, they can be intellectual properties, it can be some assets that is regarded as high risk that you want to ring fence, or it can even be an investment property, just for example, like a condo or an apartment. Yeah. So in case this is still a bit abstract to you, we can go to the next slide. We can show you two very prominent examples of what a holding company is. I'm sure um, most of the audience here have heard about um, Google and the fact that, that they have actually split their operating company and holding company a few years back. Yeah. So they have actually established this uh, holding company called Alphabet which main job is actually to hold the assets, you can see. Alphabet itself doesn't do business, but it's only a holding entity. And then it is actually the Google, the Google X, the Calco, the Fiverr, the other uh, subsidiaries yeah, within the group that would actually carry out the business, the main business. Um, the reasons for these are manifold, yeah, which we will elab elab elaborate further in the slides. Yeah. But um, one um, particular example um, we, we can elaborate uh, would be here. Yeah. So for instance, yeah, we have a parent company, uh, whether it is from Cayman Islands or from Mauritius. And uh, as a client, you're interested to invest in a project in Vietnam or Myanmar. So by simply having this holding company, uh, choosing Singapore as a holding company in the middle, as I mentioned before, um, Singapore is regarded as a regional headquarter in, in, in trades or in business in this area. So you can leverage on better financing opportunities from banks in Singapore. And separately, yeah, because of the fact that Singapore has zero dividend tax and also zero capital gain tax. So just by simply inserting um, this holding company structure in the middle, so corporates can actually invest in different Southeast Asia projects, but leverage and benefit from a low tax rate. Yeah. So one example is, um, let's say we invest in a farm project in Myanmar. And right now we have a strategic partner that wants to buy 10% of the project. Yeah. 
So in a normal way, let's say your Mauritius company or Cayman company, you're holding directly the Mauritius, uh, you're holding directly the Myanmar project. Yeah. And at the moment, yeah, let's say you want to divest 10% of the project. Yeah. So if you are selling 10% of the of the Myanmar project, then you will be subject to capital gain tax yeah, due to the Myanmar uh, operations and, and jurisdiction. But with the holding company structure, you would actually um, successfully get by because Singapore don't have a capital gain tax. So similar arrangement and tax savings can be achieved yeah, when you declare dividends or profits from the Myanmar company to the Singapore holding company, there will be savings involved as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raymond. I listened to you until your slides nine or 10. It was a very brilliant presentation. And as mentioned by Raymond earlier, by using um, an IFC like Singapore has always its own advantages, for example, in terms of taxes. So thank you. Th thank you, Raymond. Moving on to our next panelist, Delib Chong. Delib, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Singapore. Now, Singapore is a flourishing financial centre of international repute, servicing not only its domestic economy per se, but also the entire Asia-Pacific region. The banking industry is a key player in the country's financial market segment, soon emerging as one of the strongest players in the world. Today, there are as many as 117 foreign banks and six local banks that dominate the banking scene. Asia's leading banking groups and is Southeast Asia's fourth largest bank, by assets. Maybank Group has an international network of over 2,600 branches in 18 countries, including all 10 ASEAN countries with more than 42,000 employees serving customers worldwide. Singapore is one of Maybank's group's largest overseas operations. Now, Maybank Singapore Limited, a Singapore incorporated subsidiary with qualifying full bank privileges, offers retail such as personal, uh, privileged wealth, premier wealth, private wealth, and SME banking services. The bank operates a network of 18 branches, four premier wealth centers, a premier wealth lounge, and another 12 offsite ATMs. Maybank SME banking supports your business with smarter solutions, the previous slide, please financial advice, and more. This is how we humanize financial services. So as an introduction, I have been in the SME banking space for the last eight plus years, specializing in areas like deposits, payments and remittances, loans, trade finance, business insurance, and commercial cards. So the key for this webinar is for me to put across three main points that would be of the most importance to you. Can we go to the previous slide, previous slide, previous slide, yes, okay, knowing what information is required about, uh, by banks about you, so firstly, when you come to Maybank, you would present with us your newly incorporated company, which will be done by our partners on this webinar, we require certain identification documents for those um, of the directors and shareholders who are on the uh, business profile register. So in this, and given that most clients would likely be foreigners, we require their passport as well as the proof of residential address. For more complex cases uh, with a corporate shareholder, uh, corporate shareholder, a shareholder register is required. Please note that um, given most signatories would be um, present, we would typically prefer certified true copies. However, if there, if there are minority directors who are not present, then we can accept notarized copies of these documents. Please also provide your memorandum and articles of association, which should be given to you by your corporate secretary at the point of incorporation. Thanks, Lance. Now, the second point I'd like to put across is to be aware of some of the types of uh, of bank accounts that we provide. So at Maybank, we want to help you to grow your business, which is why we have curated the Maybank Flexibis current account to make your business transactions more rewarding for you. So here is the fact sheet on the Sing dollar currency Flexibis account. So simply put, it's a Singapore dollar current account for non-individuals. So 
you may be wondering, what is this all about? This FlexiBiz account is suitable for companies with mostly online transactions and prefers flexibility in deposit balance. As you can see, we require an initial deposit of minimum Sing dollar 1000 and to maintain an average daily balance of the same amount, failing which there will be a fall below fee of $10. Now, if you compare across banks, this is probably one of the lowest requirements that uh, banks have. You may also be thinking, what if I would like to open a foreign currency account? Yes, we do so in the, main, in the six main currencies, but we will only do it paired with the FlexiBase account because we believe that for companies incorporated in Singapore, there should be some sort of minor expenses that would be an incurred in the Singapore dollar. So now, uh, with regards to other product features with the FlexiBase account, you would be getting a complimentary all-in-one debit card you would be having free access to uh, business internet banking services. You do enjoy instant funds transfer via FAST, which is our almost immediate channel at $0.50 per transaction. Please note that closure of account within six months of the account opening date will be subject to an early closure fee of $0.50. Now, for all other fees and ch uh, charges, you may refer to our website for more info. From funds transfer, salary payments to making other essential transactions, make use of these in Maybank's FlexiBase current account to enjoy these benefits. So from time to time, we do have communications going out to clients once your account is live. So do keep a lookout from mailers from our deposits team. Next slide, please. The last thing of my topic is to understand the process of opening an account. We require face-to-face -face meeting. This is the latest ruling as of now for all authorized signatories in account opening as part of our due diligence process. However, in exceptional cases where one of the directors, uh, I'm assuming he's not a, a major shareholder, nor authorized signatory, is unable to come to Singapore. We can arrange for the client to visit one of our overseas branches in areas like London, New York, Hong Kong, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and Myanmar, where they will assist to verify the documents and signature before sending back to Singapore for processing. Now, in terms of country risk rating, uh, this one greatly matters for directors um, who are coming on board as authorized signatories. The reason is that we have three different categories, low, medium, and high. And for categories such as medium and high, um, further KYC would naturally be required. Since most of you are non-residents, we may require additional documents such as business plans or occupations prior, telling us why is it exactly you're looking to set up base in Singapore and, and like, you know, your past expertise and, and experience to help with this uh, business journey in Singapore. Turnaround time, like I said, depending on the country risk rating, depending on the completeness of documents, it could, rate, it could range anywhere between one to three weeks. So at Maybank, we are always striving for excellence and the unwavering trust and support from our customers is what inspires us to continue to reach new heights. I've come to an end. Here's wishing all the best in your business and thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dalit, for your simple and straightforward presentation. Um, now let us invite Gregory Carrison from ABC. The reason that we have invited Gregory is it is good to know how to open, what documents do we need to open a bank account in Singapore. However, we also want to give you all an overview of opening a bank account outside Singapore as well, which is also or can be also a, an option. Gregory, the floor is yours. Hi Vanessa, thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me to this webinar. Um, so uh, yes, I'm Gregory from the Hong Kong representative office of ABC Banking Corporation. ABC Banking Corporation is a bank headquartered in Mauritius and we have uh, representative offices here in Hong Kong, where I speak to you today and also in Dubai. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, 
So Hong Kong has been serving as an international financial center for the Asian region for a while, and many banks here serve Chinese and international clients that have set up structures not only in Hong Kong, but also in Singapore, in China, and in many other parts of the world. Um, as Vanessa said, uh, you can have a structure in Singapore and accounts in Mauritius, in Hong Kong, or elsewhere. And during the past years uh, in Hong Kong, we have seen private wealth that has remained resilient and is actually growing thanks to our position in the Greater Bay Area uh, between Guangzhou, Macau, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, clients can choose from many banks, but local ones have been stricter in accepting non-Hong Kong residents and international clients. We've seen also a rise in new virtual banks and fintech services, but they are focusing mainly on Hong Kong individual retail clients. As I said earlier, ABC Banking has been in Hong Kong for five years and we have seen a steady growth of clients even during the pandemic, thanks to the possibility of opening accounts uh, remotely. Um, so from Hong Kong, we open accounts for many uh, companies uh, that open their account in our uh, bank in Mauritius. Next slide, please. So as I said, we can open account in Mauritius for international business and clients. Uh, our offices in Dubai opened since last year, Qatar for our clients in the Middle East and in Hong Kong for our Asian clients. Uh, these offices really help us in connecting with corporate service providers, law firm and management companies such as Durisax and help them open account for their clients in Mauritius. Our strength is that we open accounts much faster than any other banks, and we can accept individuals, trusts, funds, foundations, corporate entities, whether they are based in Singapore, Hong Kong, Seychelles, the BVI, the United Kingdom, Europe, USA, and much more. As I said, we can uh, open account really fast, uh, sometimes even in 48 hours, an account can be set up for clients. So in addition to holding structures and companies, we can also accept trading companies, commercial business, consulting, and private trusts. And um, as I said, our head office and main branch is based in Mauritius. The Mauritius IFT has been rapidly developing in the past years to become one of the strongest financial center in the region. The jurisdiction is fully compliant to all international regulations and currently serves as a platform for investment from Europe or Asia to the African continent. A bit more about ABC banking. The bank is over 10 years old now and has been specializing in banking for international clients. We in fact received several awards as the best private bank for offshore services from Euromoney, the best bank for best international bank in the Indian Ocean, or the best bank for international banking services from Capital Finance and the Global Banking and Finance Review. Um, the bank is, is also listed on the stock exchange in Mauritius, uh, which means that all information you want to know about our bank, our annual reports, our financial statements are all available freely online. The bank is also backed by the ABC Group, which is one of the biggest holding companies in Mauritius. So let's talk now about the main services of ABC Banking. So we are specialized in opening current accounts in main currencies, USD, Euro, GBP, Singapore dollars, Hong Kong dollars, renminbi and all really main currencies that you would want. Uh, we have a 24-7 freshly uh, updated internet banking access to access to view your accounts and to make any transactions. Uh, we also offer free MasterCards and Union Pay Diamond Card. Uh, for those who don't know, the Union Pay Diamond Card is the high-end uh, card from Union Pay, which also uh, gives a lot of access uh, to our clients and privileges such as airport, lounge access, um, travel, insurance, concierge services. Um, all our bank account holders also have a dedicated relationship manager based in Mauritius. 
these relationship managers are available online by email, on Skype, WhatsApp, and uh, on Zoom uh, to help them with all their account matters. Uh, we also offer attractive uh, Forex offerings and uh, competitive rates for spots, forwards, and swaps in Forex. Uh, our Forex uh, uh, offerings are also available online or on our internet banking, and clients can connect freely uh, wherever they are in the world to manage their account. We also offer fixed dep deposits in uh, foreign currencies, uh, in USD or in Euro, for example. Um, and uh, we can do international remittances in more than 100 exotic currencies all around the world. Uh, for trading companies, we also offer trade finance services, uh, such as letter of credit for import and export dealings. Um, and we have a dedicated department to help companies uh, in trading. The next slide, please. Um, so for the main product that we're talking today, uh, for you and for holding companies, um, we call it a call deposit account. So the minimum deposit uh, and opening balance is uh, 5,000 USD or equivalent in any of the foreign currencies. The account opening fee is very low at 100 USD and uh, our monthly account service fee is 1,500 Mauritian rupees, which is equivalent to about 35 uh, USD. For telegraphic transfers, uh, when uh, account holders receive inwards transfers, there are no fees, and we have a flat fee for outward transfers. Um, all our fee schedule and tariff guide can be uh, accessed online freely. Um, and you may also contact me or Juris Tax if you want more information about our, uh, on our fees or tariff. Uh, and as I said earlier, our debit cards can be denominated in foreign currencies. So if you are in the US, you can have a, a debit card in the US for your corporate bank account. If you're in Singapore, you can have a debit card in Singapore dollars. If you're in Europe, you can have a card in Euro. Um, and we don't charge any annual fees on the debit cards. So, um, Vanessa, you, you, you would probably ask, what are the key requirements uh, to, to open uh, this bank account? Um, so, the big advantage is that we rely on corporate service providers, such as Juristax, um, to help us collect all the information and due diligence on clients. Uh, so, we can do the account opening remotely via a video call. You don't need to come to Dubai or Hong Kong or Mauritius to open the account. Uh, we would need, of course, certified true copies of all corporate documents uh, and all the KYC on uh, the uh, ultimate uh, beneficial uh, owner of the company. So passport and proof of address and some background on the, the main shareholders and directors, of course. Um, we will ask for a business plan so this business plan is very useful for us because uh, it will help us understand more about the business activity of a company. Uh, for example, which, with which countries your holding company will deal with, uh, what are your business partners, what are the investment that the company will do. And uh, of course, we need the set of corporate document on the entity. Um, so once we have all these documents, we can do a review in one or two days and already tell you if the account can be opened. And if the account can be opened, then um, we will send you all the forms and documents that can be filled and signed and sent to us by email and we'll open the account for you. You'll receive your internet banking um, login and password and you can start doing your transactions uh, via our platform. So the, 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 the process is very straightforward and uh, very fast. Uh, we really understand, you know, we are a bank of uh, four entrepreneurs. We really understand the needs of international banking clients. Uh, we really understand that you can be anywhere around the world. 
and uh, that's why uh, we, we, we kind of for you. So if you're in Dubai or in the Middle Eastern region, we have an office there that you can visit, of course, and meet our colleagues uh, posted in Dubai. If you're around Hong Kong or even in Singapore or in China, we'll be happy to meet you in Hong Kong. And of course, as I said, our head office, main branch and all banking activities are based um, in Mauritius. Thank you, Gregory, and thank you all for your presentation today. By now, I suppose that we have uh, several questions. So now moving on by proceeding with the Q&A, if you have any questions, please do not forget and do not hesitate to leave your comments and questions in the chat box below. So uh, the first question that we have, I think this is allocated to Gregory. Uh, Gregory, the question is, does ABC open bank accounts for CIS funds uh, investing in crypto assets? So at the moment, we can't, we cannot open accounts for uh, any companies that deal with cryptocurrencies or virtual money or digital assets, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you, Gregory. That's quite a straightforward answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, the second question, uh, maybe Raymond can reply this one, can reply to this one. As compared to a Singapore holding company, is not a Mauritius holding company better to use, possibly an authorized company or a, or a global business company? This must be a trick question from a competitor. <laughs> I was joking, yeah. So uh, thanks for the audience for this question, yeah. So in fact, um, very often times uh, um, clients would choose uh, different jurisdictions and also for, for different holding structures, yeah. Um, for one, it is for the tax treaty purposes. I, and I think for two, there is also a banking, uh, banking flexibility consideration as well. So maybe for instance, uh, Mauritius would be a better jurisdiction for particular banks or doing business with particular regions whereas Singapore has a different reputation when it comes to Asian counterparties here. Yeah. So again, I mean, in this increasingly diverse world, uh, we, one wouldn't say that uh, one jurisdiction is gonna be number one in the world or is superior, superior for every purpose, yeah. but it's gonna be a diversification play or probably a strategic play, I would say. Thank you, Raymond. I am very agreeable with you. <laughs> and the question, I think will be will be allocated to Raymond as well. It's the question is how easy how easy uh, to set up a holding company in Singapore. Oh, okay. So this part is actually pretty simple. I will just give a uh, maybe a forty five second brief. Yeah. Um, quite fortunately, uh, to set up a company in Singapore is also a very quick process. Yeah. So when all the documents, everything is in place, um, so it only takes one to two business days to set up. Yeah. And in Singapore, there's minimal capital requirement. You only require one one dollar of paid up capital, one director, one secretary, and one address. And you also do not need to be physically present in Singapore to do so. So all in all, is a very quick and easy process. Um, what if the business nature is about Bitcoin, crypto? Is it possible to set up a, a company in Singapore? Okay, the, the fact and the, the status quo of things is that the Singapore uh, government has been very proactive in regulating this industry. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, the, the MES of Singapore, Monetary Authority of Singapore, they have actually given out a um, free crypto exchange license yeah, overall to different uh, companies. Um, before they reviewed the regulations very proactively in the last two years, in fact, there are more than 20 exchanges operating in Singapore. Um, right now, they have trimmed the size a little bit here. Yeah. So the point, I, the, the key point I'm trying to make is the government is very proactive in regulating the industry. So crypto is not a complete no-go in Singapore. But that being said, to operate here, you would <coughs> require to fulfill very, very stringent KYC uh, requirements yeah, to get the proper license so that you can operate. And in terms of bank account opening, as, um, as um, some of our all the, um, some of our fellow panel speaker, Gregory and also Dalin also mentioned, uh, I, I would believe that right now in this part of the world, in terms of banking um, for crypto space, uh, the appetite would still be limited. Um, but that is probably a thing that goes hand in hand with the regulations. So as the regulations get clearer, I think most banks would wish to open their hands and do business. Yeah. So this part is, again, is the community, is the bank and the government to work hand in hand together to get the ecosystem ready. 
Okay, Th thank you, Raymond. Uh, moving back to Gregory, what is the fixed deposit rate for USD at ABC Banking? Yes, uh, sorry, I, I forgot to talk about this earlier. So we have um, fixed deposits in Euro and uh, USD and the client can choose um, to keep the deposit from one year, uh, from one month, sorry, to three years. Uh, for example, for USD now, uh, the minimum uh, 100,000 USD, the rate would be 1% uh, interest uh, for 12 months, for example, but it's payable at maturity. Thank you. Uh, Raymond, another simple question for you, very simple. Does Singapore allow holding company fully owned by foreigners? Yes, 100%. Thank you. This, we are having a lot of questions from the audience, which is very good. Is there any developments in this type of bank account opening in the coming days? Um, Gregory, this is allocated for you. There is an audience who is asking, Mauritius has recently enacted the Virtual Asset Services Provider Act. The FSC is now issuing licenses under this, but banks are not yet opening accounts for such activities. Is there any developments in this type of bank, of bank account opening in the coming days? So at the moment, we're still waiting for more details from our regulator uh, for uh, virtual, uh, uh, the name is I think virtual asset uh, license. Um, so you know the, the Financial Services Commission of Mauritius is, 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 is now only issuing license. And uh, we're waiting also for the central bank in Mauritius and also our international banking partners uh, to have more details about uh, what, what it will entail uh, before uh, being able to open accounts for, for these activities. Um, you know, the world is rapidly evolving and especially in the past uh, weeks and days, we have seen a, a, real, a real shift um, in international banking regulations. So we have to be really careful about uh, how um, we manage uh, our, our requirements for new clients. Um, you've seen, for example, what, has, what is happening now in Russia and Ukraine. Um, so, so all of these uh, also depend on our international banking partners. And um, once we have updates, and as soon as things go, we can uh, change our requirement. Sometimes it goes really fast. Um, so yes, if there's anyone who's interested in uh, open or who has already a virtual asset license in Mauritius, uh, we'll be happy to, to have their information. Feel free to, to send us an email or to send an email to Juristax and we will see uh, how we can help you in, in uh, some of these details. Thank you, Gregory. Do we have more questions from the audience? Let us wait a couple of minutes to, to see if the audience have, have more questions. Uh, Raymond, the next question will be allocated to you. If I want to set up a whole uh, a company in Singapore, do I have to be physically present there? Oh, the answer is actually no. Yeah, so you do not need to be physically present here. One hundred percent foreign shareholding is doable, and also the process takes one to two business days. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and um, actually, um, all the presentation all the presentation can be shared to to all of you as well after the webinar. Do we have more questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. Dalip, maybe this question 
will be allocated to you. Can you open can you open accounts for nominee directors or shareholders? Thank you, Lawrence, for that question. Yes, we can open accounts for nominee directors or shareholders, but it has to follow the typical account opening flow, whereby these nominee directors or shareholders who will be appointed authorized signatory and authorized persons to be present in Singapore for the due diligence process. But the answer is yes, we can. And how about the banks in Mauritius, Gregory? Oh, yes, we can also open accounts for uh, companies that have nominee directors and shareholders, as long as we have all uh, the information on uh, who's the nominee director, who's the nominee shareholder, and who's uh, really the ultimate beneficial, beneficial owner of the company. So as long as we have the KYC on everyone and uh, the agreement, the nominee agreement, um, of course, we can open accounts uh, for nominee directors and shareholders, yes. Thank you. We have a couple of minutes more. Do you have more questions? Please do not hesitate to leave your, the, your questions in the chat box below. All right, um, if you do not have more questions, I'm afraid that we would have to call it a day. However, if you have more questions, you could always reach us uh, by email. We will also uh, be sending you the webinar, the webinar video link for all, for all those who are present here. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Gregory. And thank you, Delip, for, for your participation. And thank you all for being here as well. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.